Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the second part of the nephron. Um, so that's this section here, following on from the Bowman's capsule, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, so here I've now drawn it, um, so it's a bit more simple for this section that we're going through. Obviously, this is the Bowman's capsule, and this long wiggly section here, this is the proximal convoluted tubule. So previously, at the end of the last video, uh, what we had was inside of the Bowman's capsule, we had the glomerular filtrate, which had been pushed out of the glomerulus by ultrafiltration into the Bowman's capsule here. So the first thing that happens is that glomerular filtrate moves into the proximal convoluted tubule. I'm just going to write proximal in terms of uh, saving space. Okay, so we've got our glomerular filtrate here moving from the Bowman's capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, so this moves its way down here. This is actually a very, very large volume of glomerular filtrates that's pushed out from the glomerulus. Um, actually, on average, it's about 180 litres per day, which is an enormous amount of filtrate produced. Um, of that, there is about 1.5 kilograms of salt, and there is also about 5.5 kilograms of glucose. Now actually what you produce in a day, so average adult human, actually only produces 1.5 litres of urine per day. So the role of your nephron, and actually mainly the proximal convoluted tubule, is to turn this 180 litres into this 1.5 litres. So the main thing that happens in this area is re -ab. Absorption. Okay, so things that have been pushed out into this Bowman's capsule here as the glomerular filtrate actually need to be reabsorbed as they're coming down through this proximal convoluted tubule here. So some of the key things that need to be um, brought back into the body are number one, sodium ions. Number two are chloride ions. Number three is glucose. And number four is water. Now obviously these don't just move through the proximal convoluted tubule. They need uh, to be transported in specific ways. Um, and each of them is slightly different. So with the sodium ions, these can either go by active transport or they are co-transported um, and actually they are co-transported with glucose so glucose is also co-transported with sodium through a protein in the membrane and then the chloride ions they diffuse through the proximal convoluted tubule membrane. Um, these will actually follow the sodium ions. So sodium ions have a positive charge and the chloride ions have a negative charge. Therefore, these can quite easily diffuse following the sodium ions. Water is the final one. And this one moves by osmosis. This is a passive process. So remember with osmosis, water is moving from a low solute concentration to a high solute concentration and once these three have moved from the proximal convoluted tubule into uh, the surrounding blood vessels here that means that this area here will be a high solute concentration and inside the proximal convoluted tubule is a low solute concentration so water will very easily move by osmosis from inside of the proximal convoluted tubule out into the surrounding blood vessels here so as this starts to move down the proximal convoluted tubule, it will become less and less because of reabsorption along the way. And remember, we're getting from 180 litres 
which is pushed out as this initial glomerular filtrate down to the 1.5 litres of final urine that is produced. Um, to note with this though, this doesn't all happen in, in the proximal convoluted tubule. It does happen throughout the rest of this nephron here as well as quite a lot of reabsorption in this section here.